and welcome to our Purple Preschool Storytime. My name is Miss Tara. And I'm Miss Andrea. And let's get started by singing our hello song. Ready? One, two, three. Good morning, preschool friends. How are you? Good, good. Good morning, preschool friends. How are you? Good, good. It's time to start our day. We are here to read and play. Good morning, preschool friends. How are you? Good, good. Our first story today is Lily's Purple Plastic Purse by Kevin Hanks. Lily loved school. She loved the pointy pencils, she loved the squeaky chalk, and she loved the way her boots went clickety-clickety-click down the shiny hallways. Lily loved the privacy of her very own desk. She loved the fish sticks and chocolate milk every Friday in the lunchroom. And most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slinger. Mr. Slinger was sharp as a tack. He wore artistic shirts. He wore glasses on a chain around his neck, and he wore a different colored tie for each day of the week. Wow, said Lily. That was just about all she could say. Wow. Instead of greeting students or good morning pupils, Mr. Slinger winked and said, howdy. He thought that desks in rows were old-fashioned and boring. Do you rodents think you can handle a semicircle? And he always provided the most tasty snacks, things that were curly and crunchy and cheesy. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Me too, said her friends Chester, Wilson, and Victor. At home, Lily pretended to be Mr. Slinger. I am the teacher, she told her baby brother Julius. Listen up. Lily even wanted her own set of deluxe picture encyclopedias. What's with Lily, asked her mother. I thought she wanted to be a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. It must be because of her new teacher, Mr. Slinger, said her mother. Wow, said her father. That was just about all he could say. Wow. Whenever the students had free time, they were permitted to go to the light bulb lab in the back of the classroom. They expressed their ideas creatively through drawing and writing Lily went often. She had lots of ideas. She drew pictures of Mr. Slinger and she wrote stories about him too. During sharing time, Lily shared her creations with the entire class. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was about all he could say. Wow. When Mr. Slinger had bus duty, Lily stood in line even though she didn't ride the bus. Lily raised her hand more than anyone else in class, even if she didn't know the answer and she volunteered to stay after school to clap erasers. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. One Monday morning, Lily came to school especially happy. She had gone shopping with her granny over the weekend. Lily had a new pair of movie star sunglasses complete with glittery diamonds and a chain like Mr. Slinger's. She had three shiny quarters, and best of all, she had a brand new purple plastic purse that played a jaunty tune when it was opened. Lily wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Listen to our story. Lily had a hard time listening. Lily really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Let's be considerate of our classmates. Lily had a hard time being considerate. Lily really, really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Wait until recess or sharing time. But Lily couldn't wait. The glasses were so glittery. The quarters were so shiny, and the purse played such nice music, not to mention how excellent it was for storing school supplies. Look, Lily whispered fiercely. Look, everyone, look at what I've got. Everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger. He was not amused. I'll just keep your things at my desk until the end of the day, said Mr. Slinger. They'll be safe there, and then you can take them home. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. Her glasses were gone, her quarters were gone, her purple plastic purse was gone. Lily longed for her purse all morning. She was even too sad to eat the snack Mr. Slinger served before recess. That afternoon, Lily went to the light bulb lab. She was still very sad. She thought and she thought and she thought, and then she became angry. See her angry face? She thought and she thought and she thought some more and then she became furious. She thought and she thought and she thought a little bit longer and 
Then she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. <gasps> Says big, fat, mean, Mr. Stealing Teacher. Bad, thief, claws, wanted by FBI. P.S. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up. Right before the last bell rang, Lily sneaked the drawing into Mr. Slinger's book bag. When all the students were buttoned and zipped and snapped and tied, and ready to go home, Mr. Slinger strolled over to Lily and gave her purple plastic purse back. It's a beautiful purse, said Mr. Slinger. Your quarters are nice and jingly, and those glasses are absolutely fabulous. You may bring them back to school as long as you don't disturb the rest of the class. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up, Lily said as she marched out of the classroom. On the way home, Lily opened her purse. Her glasses and quarters were inside, and so was a note from Mr. Slinger. It said, today was a difficult day. Tomorrow will be better. There was also a small bag of tasty snacks at the bottom of the purse. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. She felt simply awful. Lily ran all the way home and told her mother and father everything. Instead of watching her favorite cartoons, Lily decided to sit in the uncooperative chair. I'll stay here for a few million years for Mr. Slinger. Why does everything always happen to me? And now she's counting 1,051, 1,052. That night, Lily drew a new picture of Mr. Slinger and wrote a story about him too. Lily was really, really sorry. So everyone forgave her, even her parents, even her stinky baby brother, even her especially incredible teacher, and the sun shines its smiley face down on everyone and everything and even the bugs and the worms. The end, her story went. Lily's mother wrote a note and Lily's father baked some tasty snacks for Lily to take to school the next day. I think Mr. Slinger will understand, said Lily's mother. I know he will, said Lily's father. The next morning, Lily got to school early. These are for you, Lily said to Mr. Slinger, because I'm really, 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 really sorry. Mr. Slinger read the story, and he looked at the picture, and he read the note, and he sampled the snacks. Wow, said Mr. Slinger, and that was just about all he could say. Wow. What do you think we should do with this? asked Mr. Slinger. See, he's holding the mean note. We could just throw it away, asked Lily. Excellent idea, said Mr. Slinger. During sherry time, Lily demonstrated the many uses and unique qualities of her purple plastic purse, her shiny quarters, and her glittery movie star glasses. Then she did a little performance using them as props. It's called interpretive dance, said Lily. Mr. Slinger joined in. Wow, said the entire class. That was just about all they could say. Wow. Throughout the rest of the day, Lily's purse and quarters and sunglasses were tucked safely inside her desk. She peeked at them often, but did not disturb a soul. Right before the last bell rang, Mr. Slinger served Lily's snacks to everyone's delight. What do you want to be when you grow up? asked Mr. Slinger. A teacher, everyone responded. Lily's response was the loudest. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. As the pupils filed out of the classroom, Lily had held her purple plastic purse close to her heart. Mr. Slinger was right. It had been a better day. Lily ran and skipped and hopped and flew all the way home. She was so happy. And she really did want to be a teacher when she grew up. That is, when she didn't want to be a dancer or a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva or a pilot or a hairdresser or a scuba diver. The end. So now we're going to do a rhyme about some purple eggplants. How many of them do you see here? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. Can you show us five fingers? Okay. Five purple, purple eggplants egg sitting in, in a bowl. bowl. One fell out and started to roll. It bounced on the table and hit my feet. How many eggplants are left to eat? We have one, two, three, four. Show me four fingers. Four purple eggplants sitting in a bowl. 
One fell out and started to roll. It bounced on the table and hit my feet. How many eggplants are left to eat? How many do we have? We have one, two, three. Three purple eggplants sitting in a bowl. One fell out and started to roll. It bounced on the table and hit my feet. How many eggplants are left to eat? How many do we have? One, two. There's two. Two purple eggplants sitting in a bowl. One fell out and started to roll. It bounced on the table and hit my feet. How many eggplants are left to eat? Just one. One purple eggplant sitting in a bowl. One fell out and started to roll. It bounced on the table and hit my feet. How many eggplants are left to eat? And now we're going to read one of my favorite stories, Harold and the Purple Crayon. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon and Harold needed, uh, needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight and he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost and he set off on his walk taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it, a tiny forest. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a, a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It, It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Uh-oh, what do you think's gonna happen? Where's he gonna end up? <gasps> Suddenly he realized what was happening, but by then Harold was over his head in an ocean. He came up thinking fast, and in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, he's drawing his sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics and thought the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. What do you think that's gonna be? There was nothing but pie. But there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So what do you think he's gonna start drawing there? <gasps> so Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he, would, he went, the further he could see. So he decided to make that hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to go, he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. Did he make it up there? But as he looked down over the other side, <gasps> he slipped and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling into thin air. But luckily he kept his wits and his purple crayon, he made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. 
He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. That's a lot of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think of where it might be. You guys notice that the moon is still there? He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. There's the policeman. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly, Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. See him drawing the covers? The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. The end. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for Purple Day. Miss Tara, what other things uh, around you do you think uh, are purple? I like to eat purple grapes. Purple grapes are good. I like to uh, look at purple flowers. Oh yeah. How about you? What kind of purple things do you see around you? Anyone have any purple clothes like us? I have some purple on my dress and my shoes. Well, purple is also known as the color of royalty. So when we say our goodbye song today, the last word we're going to use is royalty. So say goodbye like a king, a queen, a prince, prince or a princess. princess. Ready? Let's do it all together. One, One two, two, three. three. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as quickly as you can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as slowly as you can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as quietly as you can. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as loudly as you can. Goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Say goodbye as royally as you can. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you. And we'll see you next week for a story time all about the color brown.